Gluskin chief, chef, chief economist and strategist David Rosenberg tweeting today, we now have had three months of a three-month, 10-year yield curve inversion. The track record this has had in predicting recessions, 100 percent. Wow. Joining us now is David Rosenberg. So, David, we understand that you think that a recession is already here. You're also the strategist we mentioned. So what, what do you do if you are in that camp, if you believe that? Well, look, the, the yield curve inversion leads the economy. So I didn't say the recession is actually starting right now, and I think that everybody is quite correct. It's hard to get an outright recession uh, when the consumer is still spending, you know, which is still the case. I think the question we want to answer as economists is in three, six, nine, or 12 months, what is the shape of the consumer going to look like? And the consumer doesn't operate in isolation of the other parts of the economy uh, any more than the U.S. economy operates in isolation uh, from what's happening around the world. It's just a case of the lags. Now, look, um, I'm a firm believer in the yield curve, uh, but it's not the only indicator around. You have so many other confirmations out there. Uh, if you concocted a cyclical stock index from the S&P 500, which we've done, we're almost back in bear market territory. If you look at the base metals from the CRB, we're almost back in bear market territory. You have uh, other market indicators right now actually telling you uh, that a recession, uh, which is not going to say necessarily baked in the cake mm -hmm. um, just yet, but that those risks are extremely high uh, and they're on the rise. And that's, I think, the message from the yield curve is just a confirmating indi confirmation indicator from ed everything else we're seeing right now. So in terms of the consumer, David, I mean, the, a consumer that is confident, a consumer that continues to spend, uh, so far at least, um, what, do you, what do you look at around the consumer that could impact that behavior and, and bring that major part of the U.S. economy down or, or slow that down? Well, uh, I think that when we start to see um, a situation where employment growth slows sufficiently that you start getting a rise in the unemployment rate on a sustained basis, uh, that's going to lead to a decay in wage growth and that's going to have an impact on consumer spending right there. And we've already seen from the JOLTS data that although firings are extremely low and we know that companies are hoarding on to their skilled labor because of the shortage uh, of, uh, of skilled labor out there, that we also have a situation where hirings are actually dissipating. So the question is uh, not even if payrolls go negative, but they slow enough, household employment slows enough that the unemployment rate goes up. Uh, I think that'll be a signal for weaker wage growth ahead. And I think that's one of the indicators we'd be looking for. You know, everybody is waxing about today's consumer confidence report. And what I find is that people look at the headline and then they pontificate about how great the index was. But remember that there's two components. There's the current index and there's the expected index. And the expected index actually rolled over uh, in August. And when you're taking a look, for example, at expectations of employment, it was weaker. Expectations of labor income, it was weaker. Uh, when you're taking a look at buying intentions of houses and appliances, they rolled over. So the expectations components of these confidence surveys actually do a much better job leading the consumer than the headline indices everybody gazes at. So I would say that the internals behind the report today actually didn't leave me with a warm and fuzzy feeling for the yellow for consumer spending in the next few months. Hey, hey, David, so we were just talking about the Russell 2000 small cap stocks that are in an earnings recession right now. And I've heard you talk about um, triple B debt, corporate debt. So let's move away from treasuries where we're spending a lot of time talking about the inversion. And you've had this concern that you think there is a potential for a lot of that to go to junk, which would be bigger than subprime. Is the underperformance in the Russell 2000 telling us something about high yield debt? And is that something that investors should keep their eye on that they're really not paying attention to as we think about this treasury yield inversion. I think that's a great point because you know ordinarily you'd be saying that you know the mega caps or the large cap uh, multinational exporters that are so susceptible uh, to what's happening in the trade side would be the areas that would be underperforming and it's the small caps which have a much more domestic economy content to them. So uh, I think the point is very well taken that a lot of this is actually coming from a recession, if you want, or I'd say certainly a very significant weakening in capital spending in the United States. Now, actually, CapEx is weakening around the world, and part of that is related to the general heightened geopolitical trade uncertainty. But I was saying, actually, at the beginning of the year in my report uh, was that the big risk for the economy was that if we don't see these triple Bs get downgraded into junk, looking at how overextended their balance sheets are and looking at the start of a huge 
refinancing calendar, something else is going to happen. Why have we not seen, for example, these triple Bs get downgraded? Why hasn't the default delinquency rate gone up? Is because companies are deleveraging and they are paying down debt. And look, nothing mm -hmm. wrong with going on a debt diet, but it comes at the expense of something called aggregate demand growth, which is GDP. Uh, so I think the big surprise this year, uh, you can say, well, boy, the consumers hung, hung in reasonably well. On the other side, capital spending has been incredibly weak. And, of course, today's durables, uh, you know, added to that uh, general softness in the view for capital spending. So right. there's that other, the other dynamic of debt deleveraging coming at the expense. Look, by the way, it's not just coming at the expense of capital spending. All of a sudden, buybacks, stock buybacks, which were a huge prop to this market for the mm -hmm. past decade, are starting to subside as well. So I'd say that it's encouraging that we're not seeing, you know, this crisis of fallen angels, of triple Bs getting, getting downgraded. But what comes out the other side is this deleveraging cycle, which comes at the expense right. of economic activity. David, thank you so much.